Mortgage payment goes out today. Only 29 years and 11 months to go. Jill, honey, please wear your green one. I don't like green. I want to wear my pink one. Green is my favorite color. Did you know that? Trust your partners, everybody. Of this stuff, it's terrible. The kitchen does the best it can, Mr. Pullman. They cook for over 600 people a day. Oh, you call this cooking, huh? Well, I don't. I'm checking out of this place. I'm sorry, I don't have the authority to release you. Oh, well, then why don't you call my doctor? That's the trouble with this place. You got high prices, you got lousy food. Mrs. Martinez in 212 needs you. Oh. Nurse! Nurse! I'm here! Oh, finally. What is the problem, Mrs. Martinez? I haven't seen a nurse in five hours. I was just here 20 minutes ago. Well, I can't find the remote control. Here it is. What is this, the hotel or a hospital? It's a hospital. Here's your medication, Mr. McVeigh. How much do you charge me for these? $35 a piece? Place is understaffed. The doctors breeze in for three minutes, and we're left running up and down the halls like maniacs. Welcome to corporate medicine. I'm not a nurse anymore. Pill dispenser. Uh, Two twelve again. Yo, Miss C. <laughs> Mrs. Cope. So how come if Melville was like? This writing genius when he was 30? How come after that he didn't do nothing? Anything. Yeah. Right. So what happened? He became a customs inspector in New York City. Ariel, see me after class. OK, so how many of you completed the assignment? Terrific. Hey, kids. Hey, Dad. Hey. Oh, hey. Mom's had it. Oh, she has, huh? Yeah, with school, so she's making some lemon mousse cake and some fancy French sauce. Astronauts can't eat that. Really? You can only eat dehydrated stuff. Oh. I might chuck it. The sauce? No, teaching. I figure with six classes a day, plus supervising study hall, then the drama club. Oh, and the hours I put in after school waiting for no shows like Ariel. Uh, write her off, honey. Anyway, that is nine hours at school, plus teachers' meetings, correcting papers. Yeah, babysitters make more an hour than I do. Well, you are a babysitter. So, what if I quit? Focus on catering full time. Trade in your students for souffles. Souffles don't talk back or carry concealed weapons. I could use a change myself. I'm thinking of taking the night shift. It's less hectic, there's more money. When would I see you? I work all week, cater weekends. What about us? I'm doing this for us. And the bank account.
Young, Fry, and Jacobson will be released in the morning, and you have a new patient, room 210. All right. Helen Parker? Severe chest pains. How old is she? She's in her 70s. Does she have red hair? I didn't notice. I saw her lying there, and it took me right back to high school. Latin class. She was tough. Every kid in school tried to get out of her class. I want you down here immediately. I was having a rough year. I didn't make the swim team. And a week later, Patty Lou Sims dumped me for a quarterback. Aww. That just about did me in. My grades took a nosedive. I couldn't study, couldn't concentrate. I figured I might as well just drop out and get a job. Except I was hooked on Caligula. Caligula? The Roman emperor who slaughtered his friends and family out of sheer boredom. That sounds captivating. It really was. We were studying him in Mrs. Parker's class. She was, she was great. She would stride back and forth, weaving this tale of intrigue and betrayal and human weakness. And how can I feel sorry for myself? The Roman empire was on the brink of destruction. Talk about trouble. Who's in trouble, Dad? The Romans. Do they live on our block? No. Look at Alex's shoes. He painted them silver. Alex, those were new shoes. I was making space boots. Oh, well, I'm off to bed. Say goodnight to your father. But it's not nighttime. Mrs. Parker was not an easy woman, let me tell you, but it's kind of sad to see someone her age all alone. Oh, this Mrs. Parker's a pretty lucky woman. She's got Nurse Cope looking after her. Are you kidding? She won't remember me. Good night. Good night. Hey, how's Mrs. Parker this evening? Stable. Oh, good. Good. Hello? Mrs. Parker? I'm your night nurse. Got your medication. Actually, I, uh, I went to McKinley High. I wasn't an A student or anything. Well, occasionally I was, but... Todd Cope, second row. You wrote a paper on Cicero's Essays on Friendship. I have a heart condition, not a memory problem. Even when a friend is absent, he is present all the same. You were quite taken with that phrase. Yes, I was. Why did you decide to become a nurse? Well, because I wanted to try to uh, help take care of people. And do you? <laughs> I try. Is it satisfying? Well, occasionally, when I have time to do my job properly. And life? Life. Has your life been satisfactory? Well, I have a wife and two kids. That's not what I asked you. Um, uh, yes, it is. Life is good. And your wife, does she work? Yes, she does. She's a teacher, as a matter of fact, at McKinley High. Oh, oh excellent. Do I pass? <laughs> <laughs> all righty. I'll let you get some sleep. I'll be here all night long. If you need anything at all, you just press that red button there, all right? And the books? The books? Books, reading material. Surely the hospital doesn't expect its patients to look at soap operas all day. <laughs> no, they don't. There's a book cart lady who comes by once a week. Once a week? Well, she's just a volunteer. Uh, in truth, actually, she's more of a magazine cart lady. There's, it's old magazines, too. But we do have a library. 
And if your doctor will give me permission, I'd be happy to take you there. Oh. All right. Good night, Mrs. Parker. Good night, Todd. This is a library? Oh, I'm sure it looks better in the daytime. Is there anything of quality here? Well, maybe all the good books have been checked out. I doubt it. Yeah, you're probably right. Well, they probably feel that most of the patients just want some easy reading. Well, a good book is much easier to read than a bad one. That's true. Well, I certainly hope I'm making progress. Progress? My health, Todd. I'm not going to stay here one minute longer than I have to. My brain would turn to jelly. Oh. It's the Iliad. I know it's not in very good condition, but it is a classic. <laughs> An abridged classic. Somebody had the audacity to edit Homer. Yeah. No, j j j just a minute. It's probably the best your hospital has to offer. Oh, Mrs. Parker, I'm afraid the last couple pages are missing. I know how it ends. Besides, I prefer beginnings. You'll do something about this, won't you? I'll try. Well, you don't sound very convincing. To be honest, I don't really think the library is exactly a top priority around here. Well, it's your job to make it so. Books are just as effective as all those pain pills that you people like to dole out. You agree with me, don't you? Yes. I'm afraid the people who actually make the decisions here may not. Well, remember the Romans. Vitas in literis mors est. Life without literature is death. A library, Todd. Is that my homework assignment for today? Take as long as you need. Just get the job done. All right. I don't know why you're making such a big deal of this. I hate school anyway. Do you know what I hate, Ariel? I hate being stood up. Maybe I am crazy, but waiting an hour and a half for a student isn't my idea of fun. Everybody skips. Ariel, then why bother? Why bother coming to school at all? I like hanging out with my friends. Anyway, the music room's cool. You like music class? Duh. They cut the music program, remember? Well, that is why I started the drama club. We're working on Rent right now. It's a musical. Yeah, I know what Rent is. I'm not a total idiot. Well, drop by sometime. Dr. Haynes. What can I do for you, Todd? We've got a patient named Helen Parker. Uh, older woman, redhead. What is her prognosis? She has a degenerative heart condition. Yeah, uh, cardiomyopathy, I know. Well, we're trying to get her stabilized so she can go home. Yeah, where is that, her home? I'm not certain. Do you know anything about her family or kids? Or... She doesn't have any. What? She hasn't any family. She's got to have someone, a, a brother, a nephew or something? Apparently not. Insurance companies, they think they know everything. I'm perfectly capable of walking out of here by myself. I don't need this wheelchair. Can I give you a ride, Mrs. Parker? Oh, thank you, Todd, but my taxi will be here in a moment. No trouble. Wow. This is quite a garden, Mrs. Parker. Well, I, I was worried about my irises. You know, I have over 300 bulbs in this garden. I don't have much of a green thumb. Actually, I don't know an iris from a begonia. <laughs> it is beautiful, though. Well, 
Gardening is good for the soul. It's as though you had a partnership with God. You do your part, and he takes care of the rest. Oh, my. If you'd like, I could drop by on my way to work. Oh, that's not necessary. Well, why don't you make up a grocery list for me? Oh, you've done enough. Well, uh, you've been gone almost two weeks. You must need some food. I'll order in a pizza. Uh, no way. I like pizza. Mensana in corpore sano. <laughs> a healthy mind in a healthy body. <laughs> Excellent. I'll drop by around five. You're a very bossy nurse, Todd Cope. Very bossy indeed. Thank you. How come Daddy's not going to eat with us tonight? Daddy has to run over to Mrs. Parker's before work. That place of hers is falling apart. What about our upstairs window? The one that doesn't open? Oh, I'll get to that on Saturday. It's my day off. I'll tell you what, how about on Saturday we all go out to dinner together? I'm catering the Henshaw wedding Saturday, remember? I have Little League practice. Who's going to take me to ballet class? That's Daddy's job. Right. Absolutely. What were you doing on the bus? I was doing some errands. By bus? Oh, what do you think public transportation is for? Well, for spraining wrists, apparently. Ow. Oh, sorry. You know, you could have called me. I realized that. Well, why didn't you? I'm an independent woman, and I'm perfectly capable of doing my own shopping. This is just a minor setback. Well, do me a favor, will you? The next time you have some errands to run, Let's call a taxi. Oh. You've got your dinner. Is there anything else I can do for you? Oh, um, you could put these in a mailbox for me. Oh, letters. Wow. It's kind of a lost art, letter writing. Everything's email these days. It's much faster. But you can't touch it. You can't put it away and take it out another day to reread. Yes, but you can write ten people at the same time. Oh, it sounds awful. Yeah, you should try it. Oh, would you give these to Denise for me and tell her I said thank you? Sure. Irises, remember? Right, irises. <laughs> oh, why don't you bring your family by? That way, it would give me an opportunity to say thank you to Denise in person for her wonderful dinners. Well, the kids are a handful. Would tomorrow do? I'm serious. I, I think they would wear you out, Mrs. Parker. Helen, how many times have I told you to call me Helen? You know, you're no longer in high school, and you come by here every day making up the most ridiculous excuses. Friends don't need excuses to see each other, don't you think? Yes. And friends, by their very nature, are on a first-name basis. All right, well, if you're sure you won't mind, Helen, I'll bring by the kids. I've handled 30 students at a time, and I certainly don't think I've lost my touch. Once a teacher, always a teacher. Mrs. Parker says I need some downtime and a good reading list. You need to put shelves up in Alex's room. It's so funny. When I'm around her, I feel like I'm 16 again, about to take a semester exam. She really wants to meet you, honey. When? On my day off? When is that? I haven't had time to get a haircut or go to my book club. I still have boxes to unpack, and I have this job that's driving me nuts. So you tell me when it's a good time to sit down and visit with your Latin teacher. Forget that I asked. I will. Why are we all eating at the same time? Why not? We never do. 
That's an exaggeration. Guess what Daddy had for breakfast? Cold pasta. He eats <laughs> dinner in the morning. Mom's sick of it. These sandwiches are terrific. How come they're so small? Alex. Well, they're afternoon tea sandwiches. My Florida grandmother doesn't drink tea, only espresso. And as soon as the sun sets, you know what she has? A martini. She says it's good for the complexion. Oh, she sounds uh, lively. We only see her every other Christmas. Because she's busy with number three. Number three? That's what she calls him. He's her third husband. Well, now you know all our family secrets, Helen. You know what the best part is about your house? No. It rattles. See? Oh. Shaky. Oh, I can fix that. No problem. We have a new house. Oh, you do? Uh-huh. And Mom says we must be out of our minds because it costs a fortune. Jill Cope. And Daddy said, too bad he didn't want us to be rootless like Mom's parents. <laughs> They're not rootless. They are, uh, they're in the Peace Corps. In Africa. Oh, they, they sound exciting. Old hippies. That's what Daddy calls them, old hippies. We really ought to have our own talk show, don't you think? Dad, Dad, look! How does it know when to come out? Do you have to wind it up? Speaking of wound up, I think we better get going. Where'd you get it? Charlie gave it to me as a present. He brought it back from Germany. Who's Charlie? My husband. Is this him? Mm -hmm. I think we've taken up enough of Miss Parker's time. Say goodbye, kids. Bye, Mrs. Parker. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. It's been a wonderful afternoon. Dulce sodalicium. What does that mean? Dulce soda. Dulce sodalicium. Sweet companionship. Let's go, kids. Thanks again.
first. <laughs> Get that gum out of your mouth immediately. Whoa. Excuse me, ma'am. Step around, please. Is this a school or an airport? Take these to the auditorium for me, please. Cool. Oh, this is far too many students for one teacher. Oh, uh, Helen Parker. Oh, how do you manage them all? Actually, they rarely all show up. <laughs> I hope you don't mind me barging in on you like this. Oh, no, no, I, I've been meaning to... <sighs> that the children have really enjoyed meeting you. And I want to thank you in person. Oh, it's nothing. I'm, I'm used to cooking for such large numbers. I, I always overestimate, so... It's not just the food. It's for Todd and all the time he spends with me. It must be very difficult for you to have him traipsing over to my house so often. No, really, I, I'm always busy. Yes. I hope not too busy to come and visit me. I would like that. <laughs> Good. Now, tell me all about McKinley High and what on earth has happened to our school? I thought she was going to faint. She couldn't believe Latin had been cut. She give you her whole Latin as the root of all language speech? Language and civilization. <laughs> she really thinks teachers can make a difference. I miss that. Feeling like I could really inspire someone. Well, this ought to be done in another 10 or 15 years. Does she ever talk about him? Who? Her husband. No. And don't ask her. Why not? It'll upset her. Then she's still in love with him. <laughs> You read too much Jane Austen. Why did she end up alone? I see it every day. Patients come in, we patch them up, send them on their way. Who knows how many of them are going home to empty, lonely lives. I never really gave it much thought. Until Mrs. Parker? Sodium food's not so good. I agree. Oh, I used to love a bacon and tomato sandwich topped off with a big bowl of strawberry ice cream. Mm, 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 That's off mm. limits now. Yes, I, I know it is. My favorite day is Saturnae because every Saturnae we get to come and visit you. Bravo, Alex. Saturnae means Saturday. Excellent. Next, we're going to learn the months of the year. Is it okay if I call you Mrs. P? I'd like that. If Mr. Parker were here, he'd be Mr. P. Chill, honey. Maybe you would let me call him Charlie like you do. Honey, why don't you come over here and help me with the door? I'm busy chatting. Chill. I'm sorry, Helen. Charlie would really have enjoyed your children. We'd always hoped to have a family of our own. Where'd you meet? You and Mr. Parker. Do you want to know where my mom and dad met? At a used car lot. They both wanted the same car, so my dad married my mom. <laughs> Did you meet at a used car lot? Heavens no. It was at a USO dance. Our church sponsored it. Bought a sea green dress, special for the occasion. The dance was almost over when he walked in.
all right. I didn't really want any. I would have been here sooner, but I just got off duty. I'm not too late, am I? Well, the evening is almost over. Well. It'd be a shame to waste what's left of it. like the safest place I'd ever been. On that very first dance, I knew he was the man I was going to marry. He was the perfect lead. And all I had to do was follow. Then what happened? Then the Cope family packed up their gear and went back to their cheery nest. I'd rather stay with Mrs. P. Well, Mrs. P is going to rest now. But you've had your lunch, you've had a walk. Now you should rest. I take it reading is allowed? Yes. <laughs> Mom, I want to see green dress. Aren't you the little girl who hates green? They had a love at first sight relationship, too. Yeah, except they fell in love with each other. You fell in love with the yellow convertible. <sighs> Man, where's your sense of romance? Hey, I'm romantic. <laughs> I fixed the garbage disposal, didn't I? Hmm? How about that computer program I gave you for your birthday? They were all our songs. We'd dance to something new, and then I'd dash out and buy the record. Every tune had a very special memory. What's this one? A garden party. A balmy evening. We'd been seeing each other for several weeks. Loveliest season of all, isn't it, Charlie? Flowers, the fruit, even the air. Everything's sweeter. Then you must be a summer girl. Mm. You haven't seen my wicked winter side. <laughs> but I will, won't I, Helen? What is it, Charlie? What's wrong? I'm gonna miss you. Miss me? They're shipping me out at the end of the month. What? I'm going overseas, Helen. I hate this war, Charlie. I hate it. Marry me. I know it's fast. I know it doesn't make any sense. Falling in love this quickly, but... I swear I knew it from the moment I saw you. I probably should have waited. I... Yes. Yes. You mean it. Helen Parker. It's a perfect fit, isn't it, Charlie? We won't be able to have much of a wedding. There's no time for it. I don't care. I'll marry you tonight, tomorrow, as soon as possible. I don't need a wedding cake or a satin gown. Just you. Grandma Forns can't eat sweets because she has to watch her waistline. Oh, uh, would you like some lemonade? Oh, thank you. 
How come this park doesn't have any swings or anything? Well, it has beautiful trees. It always did. I used to stand right over there selling war bombs. It must have been hard having your husband overseas. We weren't married. Oh, I, I thought you had said yes. <laughs> I said yes, but my father said no. I fought with him, but it didn't make any difference. He insisted that I finish my college education. War or no war, Charlie or no Charlie. He said, no matter what, I'm to get my teaching degree. And do you know why? I so that I can stand on my own two feet. Well, he thinks that a teaching degree will give me independence and freedom. I guess he just Don't wants... you dare take his side, Charlie Parker. Now, hell no. Who I knows have... when this war will end? <sighs> That's what he had the audacity to say to me. The world will be a different place when it's over, Helen. He's right about that. I knew my father was trying to protect me, but it was a long time before I was able to forgive him. I waited and hoped every day for the war to end. Oh, you should have seen this park the day the war was over. Everybody was celebrating, everybody except for me. I hadn't heard from Charlie in weeks, so I played our records over and over, waiting for him to come home. Without even seeing you, I knew. Isn't that amazing? Everything about you amazes me, Helen. Look at you. <laughs> A Latin teacher. I bet all your students are crazy about you. It's been just awful without you, Charlie. I'm never ever letting you out of my sight again. That's a promise. We did absolutely everything together. Sounds lovely. Like magic. That's what it was, magic. We were in love, we were engaged, and I had a beautiful white dress hanging in my closet. And a long veil. Oh, no, actually, it was a hat. Did you get married? Yes, in a beautiful little chapel full of flowers. And then you lived happily ever after. Yes, we were very happy. Oh, home at last. Now, when did you and Charlie buy this place? Oh, 1947. We were living in the tiniest little apartment, not big enough to raise a family. But we saved. And we hoped to find a cottage just like this, with lilacs and irises in the garden. Oh, we scrimped. But every Friday night, regardless, Charlie and I would go out. And he called it our date night. Not dancing. Why not? Well, you were married. Once a man gets married, his dancing days are over. Oh. Is that so? Men only dance to get the girl. Not Charlie. He loved to dance. And when we were dancing, I didn't have a care in the world. Todd used to take me rock climbing. What? And? Oh, now we're lucky if we have a cup of coffee together. Yes, because now we have a lot of responsibilities. What about fun? Well, that'll come. That'll come later. Right now, we're saving up for the future. And what about the present? Well, mostly I think about the mortgage, college funds for the kids, car payments, you know, the usual. Do you mean to tell me that 
in your old age, you and Denise are going to reminisce about bills? Oh, we'll have our moments, Helen. Like this one. This one ought to last us a good long time. To him. To who? Twinkle toes. You're jealous. The man my wife is swooning over? Well, anyway, now we know he wasn't killed in the war, but I wonder what happened to him. Maybe he left her. Charlie wouldn't do that. Charlie, see, you're you're speaking as though we know the man. <laughs> Whatever happened, she could have remarried. How could she? Don't you see her eyes when she talks about him? The way she says his name? She is still mad about him, Todd. easy to navigate. Is this the number 10? Number 10 at your service, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. All right, come on. Do you go all the way to the beach? Now, that's the end of the line. It's going to take a couple of hours. I beg your pardon? Yeah, to get there. My last stop is Seaview and Park. Then it's a good walk to the beach. <laughs> oh, well, I, I can take the jitney. Jitney? Yes, the little blue and white beach bus. <laughs> Oh, they pulled a plug on those years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where are all your passengers? Well, you the first of the day. But don't worry. By the time we get to Montgomery Street, you're going to have plenty of company. <laughs> Ned? Good morning, Pete. You like your job, don't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's rare today. Almost as rare as ladies with hats. <laughs> from dropping Latin. Excuse me? No manners. You home? Ellen?
You didn't happen to talk to Helen today, did you? No, what? She's not home. I stopped by twice this afternoon. Maybe she went to the doctor. Yeah. Yesterday she seemed kind of, I don't know, off kilter. Oh, you're probably imagining things. Maybe. She might have gone to the museum. I'll check on her later. I wouldn't want her to miss out on your turkey gumbo. to have lost my way. Where's the Strand? Strand? The Strand Hotel. It's a small, charming hotel with an awning in front. That's been gone for 20 years, lady. Hey, you need any sunglasses? What have they done to our beach, Charlie? Matches that dress, the one you wore when we what? first met. What? What do you think? <laughs> A crystal ball oh, from the sea. It's beautiful, Charlie. Mm, <laughs> I see. A long, happy marriage. And children. Let's see. Two, no, three girls. And two boys. And they look like you. No, they look like you, Charlie. The little one has your nose. All of our dreams will come true. Mine already have. We'll keep this forever. On our 50th anniversary, we'll bring everyone down to the Strand. Our sons, daughters, grandchildren, maybe even a great-grandchild or two. You and I will have the honeymoon suite, of course. We'll take a walk on the beach at sunset. And you'll have that glass ball with you. Imagine, it survived all those children. And just when the sun's going down, we'll put it back into the water. And one day, another couple will find it as it washes up on shore. And hopefully they'll be as happy as we are.
You don't have to eat all the salad, but you do have to taste it. Okay. okay. No answer? Oh, I guess I'll try again. Who's daddy phoning? A friend. Which one? Maybe I should drive over on my way to work. Drive where? Good idea. Drive where, daddy? The wind must have taken it. I didn't even notice it. Oh, you know what? I'm always doing things like that. It makes Sean crazy. I don't know. The beach makes me kind of spacey. Everything makes you spacey. <laughs> oh, this is the best time of day. Anna moved us down here just so she could have her sunsets. We have the ugliest beach shack ever. It's truly hideous. And if we're lucky, one day we're going to buy it. Would that suit you, Sean? Yeah. Yeah, we both really fell for it. We got married in the backyard. Actually, it's not even a yard. It's, it's more like a grassy nook. It's about this big. I have something for you. That's beautiful. But we don't think we can't accept that. Well, for heaven's sake, why not? It will be right at home with you. You see, a perfect fit. And on your 50th anniversary, you must return it to the sea. I just needed a change of scenery. Don't be ridiculous, I was perfectly safe. Ned brought me home. Ned? My bus driver. See, all that worry for nothing. She disappeared. She had a glorious day. Sunbathing at her age? Come on. Well, I've never heard her sound so happy. She took a bus to the beach. Next thing you know, she's going to be scuba diving. What do you mean you don't want this anymore? What, what is going on with you? Yesterday, I, I told you. The beach you, I... is dangerous. Nobody goes there anymore. Just junkies and I met derelicts. the most charming young couple on the beach, and I believe they'll be gentrifying the area. They had a true appreciation of beauty. Not like you and Denise. They had time for a sunset walk on the beach. What have they got to do with your clock? Oh, I gave them a little something. I'll bet. Their pleasure gave me much joy. Now, why do you keep arguing with me? I want you to take this home to Alice. Why? Because I have no use for it anymore. Has the noise been bothering you? Because I can fix it. You love this clock. And so does Alex. Yes, but Alex is a seven-year-old boy. How many seven-year-olds need an antique clock? Why are you being so stubborn? I'm trying to give a gift to Alex. Is that so difficult to understand? OK. Just say thank you and get on with it. Thank you. Thank you. I've got a list here, and I would like you to help me with it. With what? My project. Sure. Anything you want. Excellent. We need to find homes for all of these items. What is this? Is this a, a garage sale? I'm not selling. I'm giving them away. You, you what? Not to just anybody, but to people who would enjoy them. But, uh... Todd, I'm not going to live forever. Well, none of us are, but that's no reason... I certainly can't take all of this with me. You know the saying, you've never seen a hearse with a U-Haul. You're not making sense. Do you know what all this is worth? And what are you planning to do? Run up and down the street giving away crystal glasses and Chinese vases? No, that's your job. I'm serious. You're still not listening to me. I want you to find people who would enjoy them. Why are you doing this, Helen? Look, if, if you're not feeling well, I can take you to see your doctor right now. I want to share something. But you can't just give your life away. My life? <laughs> Nothing I've been saying has sunk in yet. This is a vase. They're simply things, and things weigh people down. Yes, but these are things that you have collected over your life. They have meaning to you. Look at this place. A pack rat's paradise. Yes, but this is you. Me? Things? Vases? I certainly hope not. I didn't mean you, literally. Well, if you can't take care of it, I'll do it myself.
You know what I think? I think she's giving up. I've got a call into her doctor. Oh, I should never have brought that home. If Helen were writing a will, would you tell her not no, to? No, that's different. See, every time that thing cuckoos, I'm gonna think of her. That's the point, No, the it? point is that she's jumping ship. Even when a friend is absent, he's present all the same. Didn't your buddy Cicero write that? Now, when did you start getting interested in Cicero? When Helen told me about your paper on friendship. I love you. purse exactly like yours. You look wonderful. And I like my hat on you. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? I'm out of here. Take your seat. Got a doctor's appointment. Oh, on an exam day. Next time, make your doctor's appointment after school. My band practices after school. Give that to Ned. Oh, your bus driver. Yes, my bus driver. Oh, it's heavy. I have a patient who's an artist that he'd appreciate this. Helen, I was wondering. I know it's it's none of my business, but uh, isn't there ever anyone else after Charlie? I had. Plenty of suitors, if that's what you mean. And my friends were always trying to set me up. But nobody ever measured up to Charlie. What was it that made him so special? He listened. That's it? Well, his mind wasn't always on bills and work. He cared about what I had to say. And he really listened. How would you rate me as a listener? How would I what? How would you rate me as a listener? About average. Why? I'm curious. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm just beat. We drove around all day giving things away to perfect strangers. I couldn't believe it. She even presented Charlie's silver shaving brush and mug to her mailman. Guy couldn't stop smiling. Well, it sounds like it's making her happy. Well, I guess her possessions were weighing her down. Either that or she's just enjoying getting out and giving. Whatever it is, I think it's good for her. It seems like it's good for you, too. Is that a prop or something? It's a hat rack. Well, I know it's a hat rack. It's for you. I, I thought you might like it. You seem to enjoy hats, so. It belonged to a friend of mine, Mrs. Parker. You're giving it to me? Mm-hmm. Why? Just crazy, I guess.
Here he comes. Don't worry, Mom. I'm a good driver. On at 15. Have a good flight, Captain. Come on, I can. Nine, eight, seven. Hi. T-minus five, four, four, three, two, two one. one. Blast on! Woo! <laughs> oh, look out, it's turbulence. Turbulence. The crash landing, you're going down. Welcome back to Terra Firma, Captain. Your turn to fly, Mrs. P. Oh. What do you see it up there? Everything's purple and you float around. That sounds exciting, but I couldn't possibly go without my pilot. I'll take you. Come on. <laughs> Don't forget to buckle up. No. Bye. 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 It's been a wonderful day. We've been to the moon and back. And everybody clapped for us. As though we were actors on the stage. You know, Cicero believed that a player didn't have to wait for the final curtain if he had been applauded, if he had done his job well, and if he believed for him that the play was over. Then he could make a graceful exit without sorrow. Wouldn't the audience miss him? Oh, he'd still be there in the wings, out of view. I want you to remember that. These are for you, Todd. I can't take your irises. Well, why not? You've been admiring them for ages. Because my thumb is not as green as yours, that's why. Well, then, get a book on horticulture. Gardening will be good for you. If you say so. I do. Oh, whoops. Whoa. <laughs> it is peaceful out here. Yes. Sometimes I think that Charlie's in the garden, looking over my shoulder. And I turn, half expecting to see him. Helen. It seems I've been waiting a long time for that last dance. I'm all right. You must realize that when a person's gone, they're still part of the universe. All right. Maybe next season you can come and see them in my garden. I will. I assure you. I've decided to dress up for dinner. What a good idea. That's what people did in the olden days. Did they? Ladies always wore dresses, always. Really? And nylons with lines in the back. I just love your purse. Evening bag. From Mrs. P? It's mine to keep. Dress, too. But you just look lovely, honey. <laughs> Helen. Helen? Are you home? Hello? What are you doing here? It's daytime. You're supposed to be at home asleep. I changed my shift. Oh. Yep, I missed my family. I even missed having certain patients bark at me. I thought you were tired of nursing. No. I'm sick of the bureaucracy, but I still love my job. After all, if it wasn't for nursing, I never would have found my old Latin teacher again. And she would never have gone to the moon and back in a rocket ship. Exactly. Sit up. I'm going to get you up and out of here. You're forgetting Cicero. 
when a man reaches old age, he knows that death is close by. And if during his life he fails to understand that dying is natural, then he's most unfortunate. Are you listening to me? Don't talk like that. Oh, I've had a good life. Have, Helen. Not had. Have. I've missed having you home at night. Uh, Helen wouldn't approve of you mourning her before she's gone. She probably wouldn't approve of you mourning her afterwards either. Well, it's just hard seeing her lying there. I mean, I've, I've been around enough people at the end, you'd think that uh, I, I should be able to handle this. You knew it would happen eventually. Yeah, I'm prepared. Mentally, but I guess there's a part of me that isn't. I mean, I try. I go through the motions, do her charts and take her pulse, but what good is it? There's no miracle cure around the corner. She is never going to leave the hospital. She's ready, Todd. Yeah. Well, I'm not. Reverend Simmons. He's Helen's minister. Oh. I left specific instructions for uh, him no. to call me. No, no, no. Anything. She's fine, really. Nice to have met you, Reverend Simmons. Thank you. Todd, Helen has a request. Here, here. She wants me to assure you that if you're not comfortable with this, she'll understand. Comfortable with what? She wants you to give the eulogy at her services. Uh, what? She said you'd be surprised, so I should just give you a moment to recover. <laughs> what? Is she, is she serious? She's got no business planning a, a eulogy. Well, you know Helen. Quite the pragmatist. I, look, I, I don't know the first thing about, about giving eulogies. I can't, I'm not a speaker. I don't, uh... What do you say? Just say what's in your heart. Well, you, you can ask my wife. I'm, I'm not very eloquent. She doesn't mind. It'll be a simple service. Uh, not many people, just a few neighbors and a friend or two. Ah, see, now even that doesn't seem right. Helen deserves to have more than just a few people. Well, I see too much of it these days. Elderly folks are left all alone. Not Helen, of course. She has you. <laughs> That's quite a contraption you got there. Uh, my day, it was tree houses. <laughs> uh, progress. What would you like me to say to her? Well, tell her it's a date. But not to rush it. Where do you want this? Uh, hey, don't fall apart on me now. Helen hadn't walked into my glass that day. I, I really would have missed out. I, what were we like before her? We were fine. We ran around in a mortgage payer's days, but we were fine. We didn't have date night. No, we didn't have date night. She really helped bring romance back to us, you know. Put that in your speech. And how she introduced the kids to Latin. Why is it we always wait until a person's gone? before we tell them how great they are. Hmm? 
I don't know. I've never... There's no rule against it, is there? Oh, it's rather unusual. Well, so is Helen. She's touched so many lives. I'm sure she did, but... She really uh, has. Shouldn't those lives touch hers? Look, I know it's it's out of the ordinary, but if, if you could somehow help make this happen, I, I really think it would mean a lot to her. I'll look into it. That's six baskets for the Ladies' Aid Society. Buffet for the Mallory wedding next weekend, then it's farewell to Denise's delights. I'm going to miss your leftovers. Who knows? Maybe someday I will be able to convince the school board that we do need Latin. Yeah, miracles happen. Anyway, someday I'll be able to make a difference. I think you already have. Helen, she's wearing a necklace. Hey, yo, 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 Miss C. Mrs. Whatever. I've got drums. Yeah, so the next musical, I'm on piano and Steve's on drums. Deal? Deal. Cool hat. Let me guess. That's your goth queen? Mm hmm In the library, Denise, checking out books. Very small victory, Todd. Yeah, well, at least she's reading. And he... he plays drums. That is something, isn't it? <sighs> that boy had cool tattoos, didn't he, Dad? Yeah. I won't be needing any abridged classics today, Todd. That patient of mine, the aspiring artist who inherited your watercolor, he and his friends did this for you. Oh, vulgatum amici nomen, sed rara es fides. The name of friend is common, but true friendship is rare. Cicero will be proud of you. Where are we going? Physical therapy. But I don't have physical therapy. Oh, no. You don't? Todd Cope, where are we going? The Bronx! Patrick O'Neill. Rosie, oh, is that you? Did you ever get to Tibet? Three times. Made plus ultra. Oh, the ultimate accomplishment. Bet you didn't know that Lorna Walsh is now a best selling novelist. <laughs> and Damon Marshall, here's a test pilot. <laughs> Ad astra per aspera. To the stars through difficulties. What are we celebrating? Your life. <clears throat> I'm I'm not uh, accustomed to speaking in public, so if you'll, if you'll all bear with me. When Helen Parker's minister asked me to deliver her eulogy, I was overwhelmed with the thought of how sad it is that. We never really tell people how much they mean to us while we can. Helen, every single person in this room has a part of you in them. We've taken what you gave us in lessons and, and by example, and we have integrated them into our lives and, and into our careers. I don't know how you did it, but somehow you took uh, our minuscule teenage brains and 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 you brought an ancient language to life for us 
I guess that's what the best teachers do. They inspire. You know, what, what could I possibly say that could do you justice? Over the last few months that, that we have spent together, I have learned so much from you about the value of friendship and the importance of family and uh, what an incredible blessing it is to have a career that you love. But, but most of all, I know it, it sounds corny, but you, you taught me to savor memories because that's all that life really is, just a series of moments. Some of my best ones will be the ones that you gave to my family. I want to thank you for being such a great teacher and for allowing me to continue to be your student. We all want to thank you. Well, I'll be back tomorrow after school. If you need anything, I... Oh, I'm fine, Denise. Are you sure? Well... There are a few things at the house, if it's not too much trouble. It's been all afternoon making these. Alex put some moon dust on his. This is from Jill. She wrote to you a special note on the inside. Oh, thanks for being our grandma. I never thought I'd know what it felt like to be a matriarch. Yeah, well, I don't really get to spend any time with their real grandparents, so. I think that you've been very good for them. It's my only regret in life. What? Well, that Charlie and I didn't have any children. We bought our house with our children in mind, and we'd only been in it about a month. It still smelled of fresh paint, and there was a Christmas tree in the corner. We thought our lives were just beginning. Then, one Friday night, Everything changed. Charlie had called the school that afternoon. He was worried about my driving in the snow. I'll pick you up, Helen, he said, if you stay put. We'd planned on going dancing that night. Our last dance before the new year. I waited and waited. I thought the next car would be his, but it wasn't. He never did show up. His car hit a patch of ice and slid into a tree. He was killed instantly. He left my life as swiftly as he had entered it. Everything was a constant reminder of Charlie. I was afraid to turn on the radio. I thought 
I might hear one of our songs. All of my hopes and dreams died with Charlie. But you taught, you traveled. I saw the world and eventually I loved again. My students. I couldn't settle for anything less than Charlie. People kept saying to me, oh, Helen, you're, you're young, you'll meet somebody. But it was just Charlie that I longed for. Just one last dance together. One more. You and Denise will have your rock climbing and your rockets. I have my songs. You'll take care of them for me. Of, of what? My music, my memories. I want you to have them taught. Lang's about to be discharged. We've got a post op in 224. Oh, Parker's vital signs aren't good. What? Her vital signs aren't good. Why didn't somebody call me? was in his arms, that he was the perfect lead. Now all 
she has to do is follow.